Hello, welcome. I'll wait a couple minutes until you guys come in here. I um, started a little bit early this morning. I was playing around with acrylics and um, I'm already messy. Good messy. Hi, Anita. Hi, Claudia. How is everyone today? Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Linda. So I've been having a lot of fun painting birds. Hi, Brady Lady. What's your name again? I keep forgetting. I should know this. Um, how are you, Anita? So I have, whoops, I got paint on my shirt. Like, do you guys have paint on like every piece of clothing? Like I do. Like, at least I wear this, but I still sometimes forget to put my apron on. Like my, my messy apron. I love it though. Like it is, like has so much paint on it that it doesn't even have its shape anymore. But I love, love, love this apron. I got it from Portland Apron Company. I have a good one that's not as messy that I use for workshops and stuff, but I think I need another one. Mary Jo. Okay. I think I got that. That's my college roommate's mom's name. I love the name Mary Jo. <clears throat> um, so I've been really busy working on my online course. Have you guys seen any of the things? I just kind of started to promote it. Like the whole promotion thing's a whole nother world. It's like a little crazy, but hopefully you'll see some things like if you do let me know because I don't know if you know with doing all this stuff yeah Portland apron I never know if it's getting anywhere um did you see my I did um like a little mini sneak peek a little mini free tutorial did any of you see that if you didn't I think there's a link to it in my bio here on Instagram and I'm gonna really start promoting it so if you're not on my email list um, get on there and let me know if you see any typos or anything. It's crazy craziness. So this morning I'm going to do another bird because I'm having fun with them. I used to love painting birds and I guess I just kind of stopped, not for any particular reason. Eliana, um, the, the um, um, enrollment's going to start on September 16th. So that's my goal. And then I'm going to have enrollment open for like a week. And then the course will start at the beginning of October. Awesome. Good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that you guys saw it. Yeah. Sometimes you feel like, you know, you send things out, on, especially on social media, out into the world. And you don't know if anybody's seeing it or hearing it or if you're saying things too much or whatever it is. Glad you, oh, good. Okay. So I'm going to do, let me turn this around. It's an indigo bunting, it is called. And I actually was playing around with a little tiny acrylic one. Um, I have these little squares all gridded out, but I'm not happy with it yet, but I'll show it to you anyway. So I have this little, see, I don't know what's the matter with them though. I think I need more darks in here, but this is acrylic. So it's pretty fun, right? It's just still something not quite right, but, oh, I have to put my headphones in. Oh wait, I have them already here. Let's see if this helps. I listened to it last week just for a minute or two and it definitely sounded better when I had. Okay. All right, does that sound good? I hope so. All right, so let me get focused here off of acrylics and into oils. I got some new art supplies. I've been having so much fun with that. This one thing that I've been doing, so I've been painting more on the canvas panels than on the ampersand gesso board. Um, not for any other reason other than I'm having fun experimenting and I love these in the little floater frames like I had in my abundance collection. And I like the texture and I usually gesso it, but um, sometimes, like now I was just playing around with, um, Oh, what did you, oh, you said in the emails, do you show what you're painting the next month to paint along? You know what? That's a really good idea. I could do that. I need to start doing something like that. I'm not that organized. I honestly didn't decide I was painting this bird till this morning, in all honesty, but I need to get organized with that. So I got this stuff. It's called hard sandable gesso, and I gesso my board. Um, I don't have one right here to show you, but it makes it smoother. And then I sand it with a piece of sandpaper and it gives it kind of more of that smooth texture that I like. And what am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying because I'm not sure if I like it better or worse. I just like it as an option, I guess. 
I always love experimenting with art supplies. You know, that's part of the fun. So I have my paint. I cleaned my whole palette off yesterday. I love having a clean palette with no goopy dry paints on it. I'll think I've arrived as an artist when I never have to dive into goopy hard paints, right? <laughs> can you hear the radio? I don't think you can since I have the headphones in, but I'm not sure. I always try to be careful with that. I have a little bit. I usually crop out like where the feet and stuff are. Um, not because I don't want to paint it, but because I kind of like... Good morning, Mary. Oh, good. No radio sound. Wonderful. When you just sew your... When you just gesso your oil paper by arches, do you then sand it too? No, Rosemary, I don't sand the paper. I never thought of that, but no. I think when I go into that kind of watercolor paper, it's already so much texture that I... I like that. And my latest set of art supplies, and I don't know, you guys are probably like this too, but I always kind of accidentally buy things randomly to try. And I bought some, I think it's like, it's, it's, uh, I got to get my words here. It's actually canvas in paper sheets. Someone that I was watching the other day was paints on it and then then if there are things that she loves she can you can mount them onto like a piece of gator board have you ever heard of that kind of intrigued me um as kind of a an option other than painting on the arches oil paper but it would have more of a, a texture of canvas but that you could mount it and frame it then if you wanted to, or just keep it kind of as loose, loose sheets that don't take up a lot of space until you decide if you're in love with it or not. I don't know. It just sounded fun. So I'll let you know when I get that out. One of these Wednesday mornings, you can play with that. I do love playing with art supplies. I always have. Hard to see where this. Got to map where that's going to go and where the eye is going to go. I don't know. Oh, you know what? So when I was painting this, I thought that was his coloring. But do you know what that is over here? That is one of the little flowers that's on the tree in front out of focus. So I don't need that. I was thinking that was like a coloring on him. Totally not. It's amazing what you see when you really, really look and think about it. Right? Seeing is all about really, really looking and giving it thought. And sometimes I get a little lazy about doing that. So what's new with you guys? Anything new, fun, exciting going on? Now that all of a sudden I feel like we're at fall, it just happened. Hi Dee, how are you? Which brand of brushes? Oh, I love these. Um, they're Rosemary and Company Short Eclipse Flat. This is the one that I'm gonna suggest the most for my course. I'm gonna give an alternate um, of another brush that I like because you have to get these from England. From the UK, but Rosemary Company has amazing brushes and consistently good. Like sometimes, you know, I might like one brush. I actually got some little Rosemary's that are really fun. I was using this today for an acrylic. It's kind of the same brush, but I don't know if it's any different. I just ordered the ones that said acrylic, but I got them with the short handle instead of the long handle. So I know that I'm using them for acrylic. Um... I don't know if it would matter if you'd mix it up. I guess having the oil in the brush might. I don't think it would mess up the acrylic paint, but maybe having plastic acrylic in the brush might 
be wonky with oil painting. I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? I forgot to put a color out that I like. I want to get out my, especially with that pretty transparent back on it. Oops. Taking things over. Um, so I keep all my paints next to me in this thing that I bought, like at Home Goods, and I was only going to keep. <clears throat> My go-to faves, that's my goal, but I'm not an organized person. Oh, you just bought figs. They're so pretty, Linda. I can't wait to see what you do. So these are the paints that I use the most. And these are like my mixing colors. They're like the ones that I mix with other colors to lighten them. And this is where all my crazy paints are. I'm like my reds and yellows and my blues and greens and then my blacks and grays and stuff down below. Look how full. That's crazy amount of paint. But... Those are like the odd colors that sometimes I can't quite mix a color and I'll go in there and look, look for it. I was saying one time that when I first started painting, oil painting, I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't know to have like a consistent palette of certain colors. And I literally just bought whatever fun colors. Hi, Kathy. I found without thought to, you know, the palette and I didn't know how to do any of that. So... I have a lot of random odd colors and and the nice thing about oil paints is they they don't really go bad for probably they probably do eventually but for a really long time so <clears throat> I pull them out when I can't figure out you know what color I need to mix or like you know sometimes like blues like in this case I was thinking I might have to pull out something unusual because this guy's pretty much blue, and it's kind of fun to mix odd things in a little bit. That unexpected. I'm going to use some... I got a cobalt green. I think I don't know if that's transparent, though. Let's see. Oh, no, that's a nice color. Looks like he's in, like, um maybe a, some kind of a spring tree, maybe a magnolia tree. <clears throat> See, I used to work that way, but then I got a tray to divide each paint by color. It's helped. Yeah, that would be helpful. Um, Sandy, this the bright green that I was using is um, is Rembrandt. It's transparent yellow green. So for my course, I have a whole you know supply list. If you kind of know you're definitely going to do it. Um, I could probably send it to you early. I'm a little worried about everybody being able to get supplies quickly enough, but I think it'll be okay. I think most people have a lot of it, you know. Probably just need to supplement a couple things. And it's not like you couldn't do it without the particular supplies I'm using. I think it's just easier, but you could use whatever you have. I think you could even, you know, try it with acrylics or... Don't know. I sh would should try to do the same kind of painting, same style and feel and layers and everything with acrylic paint and see what I get, right? But just like my oil paints, I don't feel like I have the basics. I buy the crazy colors, like like this. What I bought the last time, this phthalo green blue shade. Like, yeah, what's that all about? And what else? I got a really weird. Thalo turquoise, and I got some purple color, too. I do love these. Um, I don't even know what I do with it. I do love the um, fluid um, paints like that because um, they go on and, like, transparent, just like what I'm doing here right now. They're very transparent looking, and, yeah, it might be. Do you mean to do it in acrylic and in oil? It would be fun. Good morning, Carol Ann. How are you? This has a little... I like that little kind of green in his beak. I guess that's... It just feels so different doing this on canvas. It sinks, soaks in more. Like I said, not good or bad, just different. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll get my pigment sticks out here. Get to green and definitely blue. I don't know if I have more than one blue. Let's 
And of course, my little favorite that I need more of. Oh, I think I forgot to order another one of these. Darn. So where's everybody from? You want to say where you're from? Oh, that stick that I just did. This is called manganese. No, what's it called? Oh, shoot. Um, let me think about it. I think I have... Oh, Springfield, Missouri. Oh, these... These are called um, RNF pigment sticks. They're oils in a stick form. Oh, that's called malachite green. I knew if I'd stop thinking about it, it would come to me. Malachite green. Boynton Beach, Florida. Woodstock, Connecticut. Argentina. Does the oil stick add texture? Yes, it adds texture and a little extra kind of moisture. And a little bit of, um, like I like to think of it as a little bit of whimsy. Like it, it keeps you loosened up. It keeps you from being too tight with what you're doing. Hmm, I think I need a little, put a little pink up in that sky. Kind of fun pink. Oh, this is a pretty color. Let me see. I've got paint all over it. I'm going to get it all over myself. So they come in these tubes. This one doesn't have a lid on it, but this is called warm pink. It's really pretty. Baltimore, Maryland. That's where my son and his girlfriend live. In Baltimore. And they live in, they live right near the stadium. I can't think of what it's called there right now. I love it. That's a fun color added in. Is I'm not going to put it on the front of him though. Could a little touch of it in his beak probably won't stay, but why not? Your birdie seems a little grumpy with the brow thing. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? I got to make sure he doesn't stay grumpy. Although sometimes they do turn out a little grumpy looking. I got to say, I don't know why. I kind of let their person personalities just happen. Some of the bluebirds I paint end up looking pretty grumpy. They're kind of fun that way. But I hope this one doesn't end up grumpy. I want to be all positive today. Hopefully have a very productive day today. Oh, oil pastels. Oh, these um, these are called RNF pigment sticks. Now I'm really gonna try to, oh, I have to mix up my colors here. I'm gonna try to do very intentional big brush strokes. Um, but who knows what'll happen. I thought that the last two paintings, if you didn't see them in my feed, I did one yesterday and the day before and they ended up having a lot of feathers in them, which is fine. I try not to control what happens too much so that it, have you used the oil pastels? Linda, do you mean like like the, like the regular ones like, um, I don't even know where my little oil pastels are. Some of those um, have too much wax. Oh, these. I love these just because they're gorgeous. I haven't figured out these yet. Is that what you mean? I love that little tray of them. I think they have too much wax in them. I, I'm not sure. Like, I need to research that a little bit more. But I think they have more wax than, than like, the RNF pigment sticks. So, they dry at a different rate. So, I haven't. I haven't played with them yet. I actually got like cray paws too to play with. Do you remember those from elementary school? I thought that would be fun too. 
Alright, I need blues. Blue is kind of turquoisey. Oh, I did have this too. We could play with this color. This is pretty fun too, this block X. Yeah, Mary, I do too. I love how they add softness. I'm going to put some of the turquoise out too. Just closing this. I'm going to add um, King's Blue. Love that blue. Just moved it down a little bit. I want to keep get it lighter, but I also need to make that a little darker. Sometimes I forget to start with my darkest color. I adore gelatos to play with. Have you tried them? No. Mary Jo, what are gelatos? Oh, you know what? I do know what you mean. I had one and I didn't, I only bought one. I think I got it at Michael's and it was like this color and it was so cool, but I never, I never did anything with it. I think I threw it away, but if they're fun, are they oil-based or are they um, acrylic-based? I know exactly what you mean. I think I need more. Thank goodness I bought a new, oh yeah, I love this size palette knife. It took me a long time to figure out what my palette, favorite palette knife was. I have a whole thing of them, huge jar of them, but this little one is my favorite. T, what does it say? 15, creative mark. Because it has a nice bounce to the tip. It's a good size for mixing. Now, I think if I was mixing a huge amount of paint, like for a commission, like a big painting, it might be a little trickier, but I might need a bigger palette knife. They certainly have one here. Um, bye, love you, Isabel. Have a good day. That's a nice color. Um, let's see. Water based, like a stick of watercolor. Oh, do you remember? Those were other things. Remember, did if anyone was in elementary school when I was, we always had this little box of things, and they they had they were like watercolor sticks, and they were in a black tube, and you'd push them down and put that draw on the paper, and then use a water and a brush. I thought I bought some of that one time. It was an art store, and now I can't find it anywhere. But, um, yeah, that's fun, too. All right, that's, that's a nice color. That's nice. These are the same. I might want... Let's see. I'm going to bring my last favorite part of the painting is... Least favorite. Yeah, you know what the funny thing is? I love mixing colors. I wouldn't say it's my least favorite part of the painting, but I would say it's um, like I'm always anxious to get started. Like I, I'm not patient enough. Like this is a stage where you should spend lots of time. And, and it's like, you know, when I start doing this, it's like, oh, I want to start painting. I want to put that color on there and see how it looks. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's my least favorite. It's my my most impatient phase of the painting. But I think the more time you spend on the mixing of colors, the more successful. Where is my, oh, my painting. I do mean my painting up here. Right, there's my painting. And I'm, I'm looking at my reference and thinking about what colors I need. So I'm doing the blue, so I still have to do greens. And something for his beak. Um, I think I have a good color mixed for down here. And I do have a little bit of his feet showing, which I don't usually do. You know, and I need to switch this into my... I don't know if I was seeing the full thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to add that dark.
that's such a cool color. Can you see that? Probably. Oops, sorry. I wasn't paying attention to what you were looking at. You know that happens sometimes. thinking of the branch a little bit. That's good. Looks a lot bluer in the through the camera. <clears throat> All right, and I need some fun greens. <clears throat> I want a little bit of not sure. color <clears throat> for that crazy background. Always be sure to mix enough paint. Don't be stingy with your paint. I always run out and think, why didn't I just mix a lot more of that to begin with? That's pretty. Oh, do I use mediums? Only in that very <clears throat> base, my first layer when I put down the transparent colors, I use a little bit of this Zestic Clear Painting Medium. And you can mix like uh, linseed oil and a, and a um, like a Gamsol or something like that. I can't think what the word is for that instead. But otherwise, no. I try not to. If my paints get really dry or I have trouble with them, I'll mix in a little bit of liquid to them. All right, that's a nice bit of greens. I did want one a little more brighter kind of turquoise color too. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, that's a fun palette. Yes, that was lemon. That was ye lemon yellow. I have uh, fewer colors out today than normal because I knew I didn't need very many reds. Like I didn't put my permanent rose out because I knew if I needed to mute any greens, I could just use my um, transparent red or, or to, to make it cooler, I could use my um, magenta. <clears throat> And I didn't even eye my purple over there. Well, I still could use a little purple. That could happen. Okay. Let me get this situated for you and have a cup of co a sip of coffee. Tasmania? Where's Tasmania? That's such a fun word. Oh, you're seeing my little the cord of this. Is that that's okay, right? Yikes. Oh, I see what now I, I'm trying to get this right for you. I'm being a little awkward here. I have my ring lights shining on there. Let me move that. Okay. All right. Now it's time to dive in. <clears throat> Is everybody having coffee or tea with me? Having my coffee. I usually go in with dark colors to begin with. coffee. Oh, mostly coffees. I do look forward to my coffee in the morning. <clears throat> I get my coffee. My friends um, have a coffee um, company and they personally deliver it when you're in the area. So my friend Martha came yesterday to deliver my coffee and she was just going to leave it and run. And I saw her and I got to visit with her on the front porch it was really, it was really a highlight of my day. I was just thinking I hadn't seen her in ages. I'm 
So I have a, a front porch at my house, and I love sitting out there. I love neighbors walking by and and the dogs, and I'm going to miss that. That's one of the things that I don't like to give up when winter comes. Um, at what point in your career were you able to do a whole painting in only one hour? That's a good question. I would say... I kind of learned to do it this way out of necessity because I have a business, a marketing and design business, and I have, um, I got up when my daughter was young, I started, I made, I hadn't painted like in a long time. I was only learning oils. I used to paint in watercolors and I really wanted to loosen up my style so I decided to take up oil painting. And, you know, it took a long time, but I started getting up in the morning at like 5.30 in the morning to paint before I went to work. But in order for me to get to work in time, I really only had an hour to paint. And I think that kind of taught me that to do like a six by six or a six by eight, that's about how long it takes me, unless it's super complicated. Like if I'm doing, sometimes when I do like my... Um, Christmas ornaments, like those take me longer. Or if I'm doing a commission, even any commission usually takes me longer because um, I'm more concerned with making it look exactly like the reference. Um, but I think it was more out of necessity. Like it's not a necessary thing to do a painting in an hour. I just do it because I've got to get to work. Maybe when I have more time to dedicate to this, Um, yeah, I don't know what I'll do if I'll do more large paintings. Like there's so many things I want to do when I have time to. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm a little off task here. Um, let me map in some areas so I don't feel like I'm a little lost. And maybe I need to work on that eye. Keeping my brush wiped off. Maybe a little bit of background here. In this case, I do. I'm, I'm enjoying the texture of the canvas. It's okay. Oh, good, Emily. Do you think it'll be here by the weekend? That's my daughter, MX Smith, is my daughter, Emily. Got a new camera, bought a used camera from a friend because she's going to do some senior photos. And my camera is getting a little old. And I was kind of researching because I want a better camera to shoot my larger paintings, too. It's something I still have a lot to learn is, is photographing artwork. I did get a scanner so I can scan. Like, I'm sending some things... To for a possibility of doing some um, licensing. So I needed to be able to uh, have better quality images of my work. Um, but when they're large paintings, you can't scan them. Well, I guess you could scan them and then um, kind of sew them together in Photoshop, but that doesn't sound like fun to me. I'm not, I'm getting better at Photoshop, but that's a whole nother thing. Yes, yeah, so we have some senior photos to do this weekend. That'll be fun for my daughter Isabel and her friend. We were going to go to New Hope where I filmed my course. That didn't work out last weekend, so I think we're just going to find somewhere pretty here to do it. You like that kind of random background? It's a little different for me. Hi, Allie. Oh, that's okay. How are you? I'm glad you're here. Better late than never. 
Oh, that's fun. You'll have to post what you paint when you're finished. And tag me in it. I'll share it then. How many children do you have? I have two sons. I have I have um, a son and two daughters. So I have Alex is my oldest. And he lives in Baltimore, Maryland. With his girlfriend who is um, doing her residency at University of Maryland Hospital. And then I have... My daughter, Emily, who is, lives um, about an hour away from here with her boyfriend and their dog, Coda. And then I have a 17-year-old a daughter, Isabel, who lives here, of course. So it's still busy around here. And I do get to see Emily a lot, which I love. Alex, not as much, but and their life is busy. And they're very cautious, too, I mean, because of all the COVID stuff. And, and his girlfriend, um, being a doctor, she's in the hospital. So she tries to really limit her exposure. Or not her exposure, that's the wrong word. The other way around, her exposing others. But we did all get to be together at the beach this summer. It was nice. Oh, your cousins are from Lancaster. That's fun. I have one son locally and the other lives in Oregon. It's nice to at least have one or two close by, right? So my kids are 28, 25, and 17. Yeah, Lancaster is a nice area. It's the only place I've ever lived. Um, I grew up in the same town that I live in now. I don't think that happens a lot anymore. People live in the same town they grew up in. But like my girlfriend who was here yesterday, I said when she brought the coffee, she um, I went to high school with her. So I've known her for a really, really long time. I didn't mix a color for that beak either. What time do I have? 8.37. Yeah, and doing this so many times, I feel a little bit like sometimes I'm so focused, I'll focus on the time and I'll almost be able to just finish it just because I know that's all the time I have left. But I think sometimes you use your time differently when you think you have big amounts of it, which I don't really ever think. But I know that if I had more time, I probably, it would just take me longer to finish something. I was going to do the eye. I forgot all about that. Let me. Originally from Philly. Oh, are you, Linda? Yeah, I love Philly. Mine are 25, 23, and 18. Boy and two girls. That's like me. Almost the same. Yeah, where do your cousins live in Lancaster, Linda? Do you know? Oh, I want to get some. Glow with that eye. Let me. I'm working around. I might bump this now because I'm like my head's over top of my phone here. To that's what makes these birds so cool is to get to have it be loose and but have the um, what am I saying? The eye like be pretty realistic. That's where all that spirit is in there. That's um, a fun thing, too, about doing. Um, shoot, I have no idea what I was just going to say. Lost my thought. Try and get that eye. Now it looks flat. So I think I need to bring something around there. And I need, I would love a little bit of black. I don't have any black, but maybe I'll kind of mix something up here with some purple. And it'll look black enough because I don't want to go digging for that right now. All right. 
off in this underneath. Like I kind of grab it and drag it a little bit like that. Gives it, it kind of that highlight is never like a one hard thing. It's more of like a, um, a pull of the paint. And this is the part where I always hold my breath. And this is the part where I get paint on the elbows of all my clothing. <laughs> I'm going to make it a little lighter over there. When I was in school, I always had to do things that were super realistic looking. And I always think maybe that would be fun just to try it, just to do a very tight painting. And see what I think of it. My friend Renee always likes my tight paintings better. <laughs> I'm always trying to loosen up. So I think that looks good. So that's I'll show you. Can you see that? Looks pretty cool. Now I need to bring blues in around there. I know that the, there's a lot missing. But now I can feel, well, maybe I should work on the, the beak a little bit too. Because if I get those things that are a little more rigid or something like that I can just do big strokes to pull it all together are on Pine Street. It was Dean at Franklin Marshall. Oh, really? That's cool. Right downtown. That's a beautiful area. I'm not far. I'm like eight minutes from there. How many colors do you use to make the eye look realistic? Hmm. That's a good question. Gorgeous. Oh, sorry. I'm, oh, you're holding your breath too. I'm sorry. I missed all these notes. The eye is perfect. Perfect eye. Makes it come alive. It does. Good morning, Mary Jo. Um, I don't know how many colors I used in there. I would, I did um, Indian yellow, a little bit of red, and then you could use black, but I, I didn't have any of my palette, so I mixed it kind of with purple, um, my brown, which is a raw umber that I have out today, and, and a little like that blue that I love. Oh wait, I'm bumping the phone with my brush. can't quite get in there, can I? Now, oh, what's that beak look like? Um, I think I need more of this light color. I just can't get there with the phone in the way. <laughs> Wait, let me I'll push this over a little bit. Oh, I like that stroke. I'm going to leave that alone. The vibrant green background I do too and I kind of like just the looseness of it now I think I want to try to pull him together keeping it loose like that I just really and here I am using a small brush I shouldn't be doing that going on here. I don't want to get lost in these little strokes. So I'm going to put this brush away. Now after I do one more little thing here. Okay. Brush is going, that little brush is going away. I'm getting the big one back out. Got to make yourself do that because that's what keeps it looser. More loose. Looser is probably not a word, is it? Um, it's not quite white. I mixed up a color. Um, 
down here that's like, I don't even remember how I made that color. Um, that's why I always wanted to make like a color chart when, I, like I love these colors, but I, mean, I think I did green and yellow and maybe this funky color that I love, which is of a sorry paint. That's not what it is though. It's like a uh, green, Rousseau green it's called. Um, so it's not quite white because here's white and this has a grayer white. I'd say it's a grayer white. Thanks, Mary Jo. All right. Oh, 46. I got to get moving here, right? I don't think I did any green in here. scrubbing there no scrubbing just brush strokes can you clean and you yep that's what I'm doing I'm cleaning it off with a paper towel just scrubbing it real well and then going back in here some people do use a different brush like if they're doing you know cool and warm colors they might have two different brushes but and I think that's a good idea if I was doing you know like a large commission or something I might do that but Really, I don't, mostly because of laziness. Like, when I'm finished painting, you know, I'll go head to work, and I don't want to have a lot of brushes to clean. So it's totally lazy. But that might not be a bad plan. Okay. Pretty handsome guy, isn't he? here it's a little I still have my canvas showing through down here a little bit the cover it covering um canvas like this is very different than working on the ampersand gesso panels all right I need another paper towel what else does he need I feel like this Hmm. I think he needs some lighter lights. Oh, how long to wait to varnish? Gosh, Linda, I try to wait, believe it or not, like a month. It usually takes about a month till it's dry. That's the hardest part of oil paints is um, waiting for them to dry. But it's also the blessing because I find the hardest part of uh, acrylics is that they dry so fast that, uh, you know, it's hard to keep your colors wet. So, you know blessings and curses of each but and that, got, that makes him look a little angry again we don't want that spots I'm missing anything else that I need to lighten a little bit um 
Yep, you just spray acrylics. A oh, wet brand of varnish. A lot of times I use um, a spray varnish on my oil paintings. Larger ones I've been playing around with like Damar varnish and I like it, um, but uh, I still get some inconsistencies like with it. Sometimes I'll varnish something and then I'll, I won't be happy with the way the varnish looks. So um, that's something I'm still experimenting with. Okay, let me just do maybe a little light in here. Oh, that might've been too light. I do like that. I think I might be finished. Do you see anything else I need? Thanks, Anita. I still am okay on time. So I could look around here. Um, do I need anything else around his eye? Sometimes if you go back in and do things too, you can mess it up. So I think, you know, there's that point where you have to leave well enough alone and be finished too. That's, that can happen. And I really shouldn't illustrate that happening right now, so I should just stop. No, oh, those are nice strokes, though. Um, His, this is actually his little foot right here. Um, and here. There, that's good. Okay, I'm going to get my signing thing. I need a new one. My point's getting a little dull in here. And I think I'm finished. So here's my palette. Of colors and then there's burn I love the eye thank you so I'm glad you guys came oops my hair's sticking up um <laughs> to watch me paint today um I hope you have a wonderful day and um I'll post this on <clears throat> on YouTube if I can save it, sometimes it gives me a hard time. And then also on the blog on my website. And um, make sure you're on my email list if you're not already. And um, thanks for stopping by. It's good to see all of you. Always fun to hang out with you. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.